Now their herring isn't the most exciting fish in the ocean, granted, but a lot of people love catching it and a lot of people have trouble catching it. We're just going to take a few minutes here briefly to explain a few different ways you can catch herring over the Christmas holidays and any time. Now, the first one I'm going to show you is by using a burly cage. Now, this is my main line. You can see it's tied to a burly cage. Then I've got a leader, which is about 80 centimetres and a wide gap hook. Any hook will do, but I like these because herring tend to throw them. Now, the wind's just starting to chop up the surface. You don't want it too windy for herring, quite calm. I'm going to cast out with my burly and some pieces of muley. I reckon we'll get a few herring here. And there's more ways you can catch them too, and we'll look at them after. Now, here we have a muley. I reckon they're excellent herring bait. And I'm just going to use my fingernails to strip off some flesh. Just like that. We'll use the rest of him. And on my hook, I'm just going to feed it through. Just like this. So then we have a little piece of strip bait. You can see it flashes, it flutters. It'll attract the attention of any fish that are down there, and they won't be able to get it off the hook easily. Now here we have my bucket o burly. I've got a little packet of maggots that I got from the tackle store, and I sprinkle them throughout the burley. And this is what we call pollard. Pollard is what you feed chickens, it's like a bran. And I've mixed it with water, fish oil, a bit of cooking oil as well, a bit of leftovers, and I get a ball and I just crush it into the cage like this. Now it doesn't float and it doesn't sink, it's what we call neutrally buoyant. It actually floats in the top one third of the water table. And that's where the herring, garfish and other small fish tend to feed. So we chuck it out there and then we get a fish. Burly cage gives us enough weight to get out there, and as soon as it hits the water, you wind up the slack, and I keep my rod tip nice and low. Just keep it moving, just gently. Bite, bite. Come on. Come on. Oh yeah, there you go, straight away. And it feels like a herring, got plenty of weight. Keep that pressure on them at all times, rod tip nice and high. Oh my goodness, that is the biggest blowfish I've ever seen. Mate, I hate that. Go away. You're not part of the script. Go on. Go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. There. See ya. We want to cover as much water as we can because we don't know where the fish are. Chances are they're about 20 metres in front of us. So a nice straight cast, once again, you get your finger on the trigger like that, you tilt the rod, just flick it. And that's gone definitely far enough. We take up all the slack lines so we can feel the bites and I keep down close to the water. I've had a bite already. Just keep it moving, keep it moving. Yep. Oh, I reckon that's a garfish right there. No, it's a herring. It's pulling quite hard. This light gear just makes it awesome fun. Oh, and when they jump at you, you've got to keep that pressure on because they are so good at getting themselves off the hook. Look at that, fantastic, nice fat herring. And he's got that hook nicely into him. There you go. A woman's point herring. There's so many of them out there, you can almost see them splashing on the surface. It's so calm. This is great. Now you might have seen in my bucket earlier, I had uh, a little plastic tub. That's what was in it. Maggots. Ugh. Actually, they're clean maggots. They call them wogs, and you can buy them from tackle stores, and they keep them in the fridge, and they're really quite clean. But if I see garfish, they just love maggots. So I'll flip that out there, see if we can't get a different species under our belt. Yep. Oh, this one's got a bit of spirit. It might be a skippy. 
the way it's going. Certainly putting up a good little fight. No, it's up on the surface, and I think we've got a garp. No, herring, herring. Wow, excellent. See, they love the maggots too. That's a nice fat one. And the beauty of this burly cage is that it's keeping a lot of food in the water in the granulated sort of powdery pollard that you're seeing coming out of the burly cages and winding in. And these things, well, they're ravenous and they love it. And that keeps them in the area. So the burly cage has not only the effect of keeping your bait moving in the right sort of zone of the water, that keeps the fish in the area. Great invention. Yep. This one fighting pretty hard. Mind you, those trumpeter do fight hard at times. I hope it's not. No, it's not, it's silver. Oh no, get out of there. And have a look at this. It's a little skippy. Now I saw some garfish sitting out there. So we went in the maggots, and wouldn't you know it, a silver trevally. And don't they fight hard? I'll see if I can flip him over in the sun for you. Don't fall in. There you go, have a look at that. He's undersized. They're related to those big giant trevally that you see us catching the Kimberley. In relative terms, they fight pretty hard too. We'll pop him back. Now here at Woodman Point, this is where I actually learned how to catch herring when I was younger. We're very close to the water, so we can use the burly cage technique, it's very easy. But sometimes, you're on high rocks, and that's not quite so easy to use a small rod and a burly cage. But there is a technique for that as well. Let's have a look at that one. The Dawesville Channel in Mandurah is one of the best herring spots near Perth, and the south wall is too high to fish with a small rod. Here, I use my longer beach rod and six kilo line with a running float or blob. I tie it off with a swivel and use a metre long length of mono to my hook. The trick is that I run a piece of green tubing onto the shank of the hook and this acts as a lure. Cast the blob out into the clean water and use a steady retrieve back to the rocks. Herring will think it's a small bait fish and using no bait at all, you can catch as many herring as you need and impress your friends. This is where that long rod really starts to come into its own because landing the fish with a small rod here would be very difficult and uh, the wide gap hooks also help because it makes it hard for them to get off. And there's stacks out there. So there you go. Two very simple techniques that you can use and the whole family can use to catch herring. One for rocks like this, one for higher rocks. So anytime you go rock fishing, you know at least you can catch yourself some herring.